welcome. Thank you for coming, and uh, thank you to Jeffrey and Nicole for having us. I'm here to talk to you about something that uh, hasn't really been presented to the public before in the technology space, which is known as Apollo, and this is the world's first adaptogenic wearable technology. So I want to start, you know, we've had a long morning, we had an even longer day yesterday. I'd like to start by everybody just having, taking a deep breath with me in. And just close your eyes if you can and just feel the air rush in through your nose, your mouth, and into your throat and down into your lungs. And fill your lungs as big as you can and then let that air and that breath come all the way back out. And if you feel so inclined, do that again and again as much as you like and then tune back in whenever you feel comfortable. And what you'll find, especially if you're somebody who's a seasoned deep breather, is that your heart rate starts to slow down very quickly and your thoughts start to slow down very quickly and you start to feel calm. And what this is doing is it's our natural way that we've evolved inside of our bodies and all of human humanity to increase our resilience and our adaptability by boosting something called parasympathetic tone, which is the amount of activity in the nervous system that supports rest and digestion and creativity and reproduction and uh, sleeping and everything we, we do when our bodies are feeling good and we're feeling safe. But we can't do those things the way we want to when we're feeling stressed out and we're in a threatened state. And so Apollo, we developed, I'm a psychiatrist and a neuroscientist, uh, and we de I developed Apollo out of the University of Pittsburgh to provide some of these benefits to people, um, starting with my patients leaving the office, but then to the general public as we found this technology can enhance performance and recovery under stress. And so why is this important? It's because burnout is an epi em epidemic right now in our world. The World Health Organization just declared that burnout is an illness that requires and warrants medical treatment. And because why are we burning out? Our bodies are not meant or built for the way that we work. We suffer chronic daily stress all the time from pings to uh, Slack channel uh, to texts and emails and our car beeping and our kids screaming and all of these responsibilities looming over us all the time. And the only thing we can think about is, did I leave the stove on or the door open? And our brains are just triggered and hypervigilant to stress. And this overacts, overactivates our fear center and it disrupts activity in our emotional cortex and boosts activity in the amygdala, which many of you have heard about. And this is our cent rep center of our fear component of our brains that goes off first in response to threat. And so the result is that you can't sleep and, you, and your, your focus gets all disrupted and you can't pay attention when you want to and you fall asleep at meetings and your mood suffers and your heart rate variability goes down. And this is important because heart rate variability is, is the single most reliable measure of how we determine the effects of stress on the body today. In mental health, we have never had a metric for the effects of stress on the body. And up until about 20 years ago, all of the work on heart rate variability started to show that if you track this metric over time, and heart rate variability, by the way, is the rate of change of the heartbeat over time. So as you track this metric, what we find is that, and it's measured in almost every wearable device now, um, that if every second generation wearable, uh, like an Apple Watch and Oura Ring, that if you track this metric, you can see that high heart rate variability corresponds to in increased nervous system balance and resilience and adaptability but low heart rate variability increases our risk of depression, anxiety, PTSD, injury, physical and mental injury, cardiovascular disease, and if you've already had a cardiac episode, it increases our risk of sudden cardiac death to have low heart rate variability. So this is a really critical metric, and all of these companies have spending hundreds of millions of dollars to figure out how to measure it more accurately all the time. And yet no one until now has figured out how to do anything about it. But for thousands and thousands of years, we've been using deep breathing. And deep breathing has always worked to improve heart rate variability and adaptability, which is why we still do it. And it's why it's still a thing. But the problem is we're not always in a field relaxed and calm, being reminded to breathe. We're in meetings and we have stuff going on and it's really hard to train yourself to center in your body and pay attention to your breath like we did earlier. But as soon as you pay attention to your breath, you're telling your body that you have enough attention to take the time and you feel safe enough to take the time to focus on your breath, which is why it works. But it's hard. And it takes thousands of hours, just like meditation. 
meditation works really, really well, but it takes us out of the present to practice it, and it can take thousands of hours, and unless you're a Buddha master, it's very difficult to meditate in every waking, walking moment of your life. But that's really the goal of what the practice of meditation is for. And yet, then we have touch. And touch is very interesting because the touch is the single most important and fundamental way that we increase activity, activity and balance in our nervous systems through safety. Touch has evolved to be the way that we convey safety to each other in our environment. And it has evolved that way because that's how we form community and bonding and safety hundreds of millions of years ago in our primate and mammalian ancestors. And so Apollo is the first technology that works to improve adaptability and safety in the body by sending signals that are gentle, layered, wave-like vi vibrations that feel kind of like an ocean wave through your body, on your ankle or your wrist, that signals your emotional cortex that you're safe, just like somebody holding your hand on a bad day. And what we see is that when people use Apollo, heart rate variability goes up, and this correlates directly with them feeling better. People who have low heart rate variability will report that they can't sleep and they're stressed out and distracted and can't focus, and then we see they'll use Apollo, and within minutes in the lab uh, to hours, and we see track in the real world, people's HRV trends up, and that corresponds continuously to symptom and, and self-report improvements of focus, refreshing, uh, feelings of, of uh, restfulness, calm, being able to sleep better, and so on. And what's even more interesting is that you don't need to just believe that this works because we can show it to you in an app, in our app, or in Apple HealthKit, or in your Aura Ring app, or in any other app that's tracking your biometrics. You can see over time that Apollo frequencies and these waveforms are actually making you better. You can track your sleep and you can track your HRV over, uh, over time and see this. Um, and now we've shown in double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled crossover studies at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, this was our very first study that showed uh, that we could improve heart rate variability within two to three minutes by two to three times each individual's mean under stress. And under stress, HRV typically goes down. Within three minutes, Apollo frequencies, Apollo frequencies increased heart rate variability reliably in 80% of people. And this was found to correlate with cognitive performance increases. So as people's HRV goes up, their cognitive performance goes up on a very, very stressful task that NASA gives to astronauts before they go into space uh, to test their response to doing simple things under extreme frustration. And so it's a very well-validated task that's very hard to increase activity on. And so Apollo increased the heart rate variability, and then heart rate variability resulted or correlated with an, an increase in cognitive performance and also feelings of calm and mental clarity. And over in the real world, I think more, even more importantly than the lab, in the real world we see these effects continuing on to, to people, where 95% of people of over 2,000 users report that they see enhanced productivity, focus, and sleep when using Apollo, and when they send us their biometric data from wearables, it, cor it corresponds with what they're experiencing. Most interestingly, similar to medicine, but in a way that we don't always think about it, the more stressed out people are, or we are, the more we respond to things that quickly relieve our stress. And the harder it is to make change. But when you have something that increases your balance in your body or helps relieve a stressful episode right away, you see, that, uh, you see that effect more dramatically. You notice it more dramatically because the delta, the difference between your stress state and your calm state is much greater. And so Apollo has that same effect, and we see that very regularly. And so people who have PTSD and depression and chronic pain and treatment-resistant mental illnesses actually respond to Apollo very well, and we see them reporting within just two weeks of use, but even faster in a lot of folks, improve safety, sleep, mood, energy, decreased anxiety, and most interestingly, that they self, they feel that they don't need to take habit-forming medicines like opioids and benzodiazepines anymore, and we see a lot of people tapering off these quite a bit within just a few weeks of use. And lastly, I'll leave you with that we've had recent studies showing that Apollo increases access to meditative states uh, using EEG brainwave tracking, which was done at the University of uh, Pittsburgh as well. And the last thing I'll leave you with is that Apollo is about bringing health back to the self and centering in the self. Savatya, the ancient Sanskrit word for health, is realizing and one's own self. And it's about bringing health back to us and helping us recognize our own potential to heal and be our best selves. And Apollo helps bring us back to that through breath. Thank you.